Ain't no high stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all to everybody who continues to rock with us as we continue throughout the night, as we do here on the show every single week. We open up the phone lines, 804 402 2893. That's the number to dial to be a part of tonight's discussion. Y'all rock with us. We roll with y'all. Thanking everybody who is checking us out right now on tune in and on stream on it. Haven't given any love to those folks that are checking out the replays on YouTube as well as iTunes. As I mentioned, y'all rock with us. We roll with y'all. Uh, it's time for our brother. It's been a while since he has led us in a segment, uh, but we're about to take a walk into the Sham Pipple Room where you got lava lamps and <laughs> alligator shoes and, and uh, all that other kind of 70s pimp stuff. So Miss 3375, the con is yours, as they say on Star Trek. Cool, cool. I'm going to keep it right going with this, this voting, and I'm going to talk about people, reasons that I've heard for them not to vote. And one of the reasons I heard people say they're not going to vote is because they already know who they're going to who they already pick who they want to be president, so they're not going to the vote. Why would they go to the voting polls if they already picked who they was going to, right. I you know, for president? So I just want y'all to weigh in on that right quick. That's so dumb. You said what? That's so dumb. I mean, if you knew who was going to win, then why does anybody in America have a vote? That's... I mean, it's, it, look, if you're going to be lazy, just be late. Just say, I'm lazy and call it a day. It is your right to go vote, just like it's your right to go to the grocery store and buy some food for yourself. Mm -hmm. It is your right to go vote. And, and just one thing that Marcus J. said years ago, he always says it. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Right. To, and me, I mean, I ho it may be ignorant to a lot of people. I honestly did not have a lot of knowledge of how the voting process works until this year. Uh, that's just me. I had no, I, I didn't have knowledge of the e electoral college. Now I know. So I mean, my honest question don't, it doesn't mean I'm not going to vote. But why do we vote if it's up to the electoral college? As far as the president now, not saying I'm not going to vote. I just didn't have the knowledge. Previously, I mean, we vote to give them direction. I mean, honestly, to give who direction? The electoral college, because but you they choose at the end who they want, they, right? They do choose. However, so, I mean, however, they almost never go against yeah. the will of the people, though. They don't want to go. They almost. They, they almost, almost never, never almost go that, against that, it. See that almost? almost never. See, but, but I don't know any who ever that, has. That almost, that almost is there, but it's it's one of those. It, it's an almost, but it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, it, it, does, it just doesn't happen. It, this guy, that's the reason why it's news that this dude, I can't remember where he's at, man. I, I wish I could, but that's the reason why this dude is making the news because he's like, I ain't voting for her. He was yeah. Bernie Sanders supporter. He's like, mm -hmm. I ain't voting for her. So that's the reason why it's news because right. it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem with that is, you know, the, by the fact that he said that, we'll see tomorrow if he falls through because if he falls through with that, you know, he, he clearly is looking for another thing to do in two years because <laughs> his, his, constituents, his constituents may not follow him for that. That's, I mean, that's just ba basically saying, yeah, here's my money. Go throw it in a trash can. So he, He's from Washington State. I just, I just looked it up. Uh, the guy is from Washington State. Uh, there's actually two of them, and the one that I heard of, it's a dude by the name of Robert Cetasicum, who's a member of Washington's Pulley-Up tribe. He's a Native American, and he says, quote, she will not get my vote, period. She doesn't care about my land, my air, or my fire, or my water. And so he, he's refusing to uh, support her. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. live from the den. Legacy Internet Radio. We got a call on the live line. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? My name is the number one truth fighter. I'm calling from all over America to speak to my brother, Marcus J. Oh, is this my brother, Warren? This Warren, brother. What's going on? What's going on, Warren, man? It's good to, good to talk to you, man. You're listening to the number one truth fighter, Warren Ballantyne, live on the Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. Show. Warren, we talking about 
the election tomorrow. We're talking about uh, who we're going to vote for, why we're going to vote for them, how we're going to act on Wednesday when it's over. Uh, I know you got an opinion on that, brother. What's your thoughts? Well, I think everybody, you know, what's funny to me is how everybody's telling people, well, if you don't vote for, if, if you don't go vote, you voting for Trump. Mm. Or if you vote Gary Johnson or Jill Stein, you voting for Trump. Well, the reality of it is, is that our ancestors fought for us out of right to vote for each individual person to vote the way they want to vote, not how a group think you should vote, but how you want to vote. So if you want to write in a name, you want to vote for Hillary, you want to vote for Trump, you want to vote for Jill Stein, whoever you want to vote for, you vote for. It's as simple as that. And, you know, the reality of it is this. It's all going to come out in the wash. And, you know, I'm personally, I'm going to be voting for either Jill Stein or Gary Johnson. I, you know, I don't think Hillary deserves our vote. I don't think Trump deserves our vote. But I do know one of them will be president. Mm -hmm. uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm going to be doing... I'm going to be doing stuff from 6 o'clock in the morning to probably about 2 o'clock in the morning tomorrow because I'll do Ricky Smiley's show or his part show. I'll do my own show. Then I'm hosting an election uh, for Radio 1 Raleigh uh, on Foxy. I'll be doing election night over there starting at 8 o'clock to about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then I'm doing a couple of TV hits. But, as you know, as I'm telling everybody, you know, come 9 o'clock, one of two things is going to happen. Either if she wins Florida or North Carolina, the race is over with. If she loses Florida and North Carolina, then the, the key states that come into play are Michigan, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Colorado. She's going to win Nevada. Uh, and so if, if she loses Florida and North Carolina, then they look at Michigan because there's no early voting there. They look at Pennsylvania. There's no early voting there. They look at New Hampshire. There's no early voting there. Uh, and so if, if, at 9 o'clock, she hasn't won North Carolina or uh, Florida. Then you're looking at about 11.30 to find out if she carried Pennsylvania, Michigan, and New Hampshire. If she carried New Hampshire, because really she should carry Pennsylvania and Michigan, if she carries New Hampshire, she'll win the election. If she doesn't carry New Hampshire, then it'll be all eyes on Colorado, and then by midnight we should know what the results are for Colorado. So, uh, you know, it's set up for her to be president if people go out and vote. But the key electorate in this vote for her is really women and Latinos because blacks aren't going out the way we went out for Obama in uh, 08 and, uh, and in 12, but that should have been expected. But quite frankly, we're not even out the way we were for Kerry in 2000. Uh, so uh, she really needs the Latino vote to, to turn out, show up and show out, and she needs the, the female vote, the white suburban female vote to, to turn up and show out in Pennsylvania, Michigan, North Carolina, Florida, and Colorado. Those are the key states in this election. Everything else is, is business as usual as far as Republicans and Democrats go. Let me, let me ask you two quick questions, uh, Warren. Thanks for calling in. You're listening to the number one true fighter, the Warren Ballantyne Show, Warren Ballantyne. Warren, I endorsed Gary Johnson, and I ended up having to rescind that uh, endorsement just because the more I saw of him, the less presidential uh, he seemed to me. Uh, I don't know if you saw the fake heart attack that he had when they asked him about marijuana, which, I mean, it was equal parts funny and embarrassing to see him do it. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah. I got to Google that because I and, and, and the crew is laughing about that. But here's the, yeah, other, yeah, here's, it, here's it the main funny. question that I wanted to ask. It was funny and embarrassing. Him. You're right. It was equal parts. He, yeah, exactly. Here's the main question I wanted to ask you. Uh, my, my partner, Big Rube, did this thing when we were – uh, doing this kind of show back in 2012 when Barack Obama was running. He did this thing about the, inter, uh, the, the intelligence of the voter. And the smarter you are, uh, the more educated you are, the more likely you are to vote Democratic. Uh, you have a lot of uneducated, I don't want to say uneducated, it's almost like a negative connotation, but the less educated white folk are the ones that are voting Republican as well as the uber rich, which I mean, there's, there's historical aspects to that, but uh, I, I won't let you comment on that. What's your thoughts on that? Well, we got to be careful with that, with, with this. And I'm going to tell you why, because if you, if you break down the data, it's just like you hear all this, well, all this black on black crime. Well, it's white on white crime. It's Latino on Latino crime. It's Asian on Asian crime because people kill where they live. And usually people live around people who look like them. Well, it's the same thing when you talk, start breaking down the demographics for voting. You have more uneducated black folks voting Democrat than you have educated black folks voting Democrat. 
because these uneducated black folks who don't have the degrees, who may have the GEDs and other things, they're voting Democratic because that's what their mothers voted and their grandfathers voted and, and such such on. So we got to be careful when we try to break down these demographics and see that's the thing about the media. The media will throw something out here without showing you the whole sp- uh, spear of what what they're looking at. They'll just show you one side of the ball and let it, instead of letting you see the whole spear itself. And so when we wrote, break down this, well, it's all these uneducated white men voted for voting for Republicans. Well, it, it's the same argument with these Democrats. In fact, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about on everybody's show, including my show tomorrow, is the fact that what do we what do we do November 9th? Because this is the reality. The reality is this: since 2008. The Democratic Party has spent $14 billion on advertising campaigns throughout this country. Less than 2% of that money has been spent and divided between Latinos, black, and and Native American Indians. All the other money went to white-owned corporations, radio stations, television stations, everything else. Then when you look at what's going to happen November 9th, November 9th is the biggest money day in D.C., because that's when the transition starts happening for whoever's going to be president. So all these committees, all these contracts that come up, this is when they start making these deals. And usually, even under Barack Obama, when when all these deals are said and done, black people are getting less than 1% of these major contracts is being negotiated that first week as they go into transition that none of us talk about. We just get so happy because we got a black president. We're going to be happy because we got a woman president. But what we need to be talking about is the monetary part of this and not just who we put in the office. Because, see, the, rea- the reality of it is this. Look, I'm not a Trump supporter. I think the man is the biggest idiot, you know, and it shows the the, the, the the stupidity of so many Americans who could support and follow this man. But the one thing that he's saying is true is that it is money. It is millions and millions of dollars in D.C. that the American people are paying for in their tax money who don't get an opportunity to make money off of it. And he's right about that. And that's what's going to happen November 9th when they transition everything over. And none of us are looking at that. None of us is talking about that look you got clinton i mean look i'm sitting here laughing my butt off because this 70 year old woman is quoting lyrics from my president yeah, is black in front I of black that. people and that. so to, to, to me this is all about look we gonna do and say whatever we need to do and say to get in here but once we get in here that's the question for me. Once you get in there, what are you gonna do? Yeah. What are we gonna What are we gonna demand? Look, I love Barack. I campaigned for Barack since he was a state senator. Know him personally. I, I can honestly say, as a as a black man, he didn't do ninety percent of the things he said he was gonna do when he was running for office. Now, some of it is because the the, the Congress and the Senate blocked him on different things. But it's other things that he can do. They're talking about justice reform. The easiest way you do justice reform is you do an executive order. For, and look, if he did it on the federal side, the states will follow. You do a federal uh, order saying that all nonviolent felons, once they've done their time, once they paid their debt back to society, they can pay $1,000 to clean their record off. If you do that, that allows all these brothers, all these Latinos, all these poor whites the opportunity for $1,000 to clean their record and get back into the workforce and not have this scarlet letter A over them for the rest of their life. And then what you do is say, let's take this $1,000 and we're going to put it in a pool. And that, that money is going to go to school teachers and first responders so we can pay them what they're worth. We, our education system is so bad in this country because our teachers are, are going to school, getting master's degrees, and they're making $40,000 a year. Right. You can't survive off of that when you get $100,000 of student loan debt. No. So we, we, we got to make this where it's a realistic conversation, not just we happy we getting the person we want in office. Because just because you get an office don't mean – I mean, and, and to be honest with you, I don't even know how black people can make an argument to Hillary Clinton once she gets in or Donald Trump if he wins because we didn't make an argument to Obama. So we can't make an argument to Barack. When they get in there and we say, well, why, why ain't you doing this? Well, hell, why you didn't say this when Barack was in here? Yeah, you, you, kill, you kill your own argument because you didn't do it while – you had your black president, and now the time is lost. I, I'm glad you brought up the piece about the executive order because I know that's something that you talk a lot about on the Warren Ballantyne show, and uh, I appreciate you bringing that to the Ain't No Half Step on Marcus J audience. Warren, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you call us up during our live show, man. Thank you, brother. I'll be listening tomorrow.
Hey, brother, you know, look, when, when you hit me, you know I'm calling. You you knew I was calling no matter what. You knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Appreciate you, You know brother. I was calling no matter what. I got too much love for you not to call. I got you, brother. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you soon, man. I, all right, brother. Talk to you soon. You got it. Peace. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy and that radio first lady. Let me just say this to get back to Mr. 3375's question. I really think that a lot of it for us and for the people is just mis, uh, miseducation. Like, everybody, the knowledge is not there. It's not like that we go out every year, every month to try to go to our neighborhoods or to our hoods to teach people about what goes on in the White House or what goes on in the Senate and the Congress. Don't forget a lot of these people, either they're not paying attention in school or they're not getting the education that they need to know what's going on during this time. So, uh, of course, if you have the people who say they're not going to vote, now I can't say that the people who are saying that they're not going to vote are educated because my cousin actually stated that she's not going to vote and she's a very smart, very intelligent, but she said she just feels like the whole election is bogus. And again, this is from her research and things like that, but I just feel like that we, we aren't educating or we aren't listening enough. We're not going again to our neighborhoods for us as people to teach each other what we need to know. Like all the brothers and sisters in this room right now could go and have a meeting and spread this knowledge for the next election cycle just to let people know and make them aware of what they need to do. So to probably help them change their mind from saying that they're not gonna vote to at least go and say, okay, let me go ahead and do my civil rights that I have to go vote. So like I said, I just think a lot of it is just uneducated moves no, why they I, don't want to vote. No, I, I agree with that, you know, and, and just to kind of piggyback on what you're saying, First Lady, before I give it back to Mr. 3375, you have a lot of people, black people, and I'm just speaking to us right now, who don't understand certain things because we just simply wasn't taught. Our parents weren't taught, and their parents weren't taught. Yes, I so and agree. So, yes. so when we talk about White privilege. You know, a lot of times, I said this a long time ago on the show, when we talk about white privilege, you get a lot of white folk to get in their feelings when they mm -hmm. use the phrase white privilege. But what white privilege really is, is a head start. I think you would be disingenuous in this country if you didn't acknowledge that there is a head start. Yes. That's the essence of what How white privilege. How do they not see that? Well, uh, there's a lot of reasons, but That's crazy. The, 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 the reality is when we talk about, you know, the dawn of slavery, I mean, really, it was like 9, 10% of white folks actually had slaves. But the group of white folks who oversee, oversaw the slaves, you know, are the ones that are going to benefit as well. They're going to benefit off of the skin, of their, the color of their skin. They're going to benefit off of the fact that they had money. They had power. They had land. They had all of these things for generations before we did. Anytime you look at a race, anytime you look at a race, and if somebody gets to run ahead before everybody else starts, the people running ahead are the ones with the advantage. And so if we understand that athletically, then we should, as Jody said, understand that socially. And you get a lot of white folk that get in their feelings when, you, when they hear people like me say these things. Like, I'm not taking a shot at you, brother or sister. I'm speaking what's real. Right. And if you got a problem with it, if your natural response is to fight me on it, it might be some real stuff that I'm talking. But right, staying in the Shan Purple Room because I love being in this room. Like, it's really helping with my sinuses, like the lavender. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but no, real talk. And, and, and I think this too, like Marcus Jay was saying about how a lot of our parents are older and a lot of them stop school like in the ninth grade, yeah. you know, things like that. So they aren't as educated. But I feel like a lot of us are scared to ask questions because we feel some type of way or we feel like that we're going to be looked upon as dumb or uneducated but trust me in order for you to learn something you've got to ask questions you really have got to ask questions and if you feel like that you can't ask questions go to the library 
For, if you don't want to go to the library, Google. Google anything. If you need to look up a word, if you need to look up who was the president, the third president, do that. You know, don't put yourself in this box because you feel like that you can't ask any questions because you may not know or you may have stopped high school or dropped out of high school. There is always things that can be learned and people around, again, like the people in this room who can teach you if you want to learn. So, again, there's no reason why you should have the mindset of that you're not going to vote only because you're saying to everybody else on the outside that you're just not going to vote. But really on the inside, you really don't know probably what it means to vote. So again, I feel like getting back to the shampoo room question, um, people who say that they don't vote, again, I just think that they just, you know, they just need to learn. They just need to maybe know a little bit more and then, you know, make the decisions from there. But hey, everybody has an opinion. They can do what they want to do. They don't have to vote. Cool. And I have um, another one that I heard many, 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 many um, African-American people tell me um, over the course of the years. They say, why should I vote? I'm still going to be a broke black man in the state of America. I agree. You agree? Because coming to eighth, I'm still gonna be on a budget <laughs> I'm wearing all black Wednesday I'm in mourning for my country just saying <laughs> I, I, I just I, I hear you on that I'm just not one for that attitude yeah I, I just yeah. you know I'm not built that way you know uh, we gonna have most folks most folks will have the same lifestyle regardless of who's gonna be elected tomorrow right and what really bugs me, and I think it's just kind of silly and petty, and I get that for most folks it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, but the whole, oh, man, if Trump's elected, I'm leaving, or they're going to have us picking cotton and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't like talking like that. Right. I don't like talking like that because it's not funny. We're talking about real stuff. You don't want your children to hear you talking like that. And no, you're not going to be picking cotton because Donald Trump is the president. Right. If 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 we weren't picking cotton when George Bush was the president, then exactly. we ain't gonna be picking cotton because Donald Trump. And the reality is, yeah, with all know. of the money that we got in our communities, it may not have trickled down to the, to the five of us in this room. But right. I mean, the, all the money in our community in our communities, the only folks that's picking cotton is people who actually own cotton farms, exactly. and they paying people to pick cotton. Paying people, to you know. It. So like, stop saying that silly shit. Like yeah. seriously, yeah. like stop saying that. Um, and so I, I just I, I, I think that we need to do better because we also know that there's going to be half of the electorate mm -hmm. every election, big rule, that's mad. Right. You know, George Bush's people was mad until he stole the election in 2000 yeah. and he got it. Then Al Gore's people was mad. And then, you know, uh, John Kerry's people was mad in 04. You know, and then McCain's people was mad in 08. And then Willard Romney's people was mad in, in, in 12. And it's very likely that Donald Trump's people are going to be mad tomorrow right. because Hillary Clinton was selected. Right. You know what I mean? Like, she's, she's the chosen one. And the only person that I've seen just in the last 40 years, in my estimation, to bust up the Matrix was Barack Obama. Yeah. I don't think that Donald Trump's going to be able to bust yeah. it, you know, because at the end of the day, if he had run a campaign and just scaled back some of the just some of the aggressiveness, yeah. he would have blew her out out of the water. He would have blew her out because the reality he couldn't control himself when everybody first heard Donald Trump running for president. You was intrigued. Everybody was like, wow, Donald Trump. I know I was intrigued. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Till he opened his mouth. <laughs> I mean, but that's just like the, you know, I'm going to put in terms that we may all understand. It's like you in the club and you see a hot woman and you go over there and stuff like that. And you're like, mm, you know, what's going on? And then she talks. <laughs> that's you right. Know? Break it down, big room, I mean, in layman terms. And Break that's really down. what that's what happened with Donald Trump. You know, everybody was intrigued. Yeah. Everybody's like, you know, he's a businessman. Yeah. He's a the billionaire. The apprentice guy. He might, yeah, yeah, the apprentice guy. We all stuff. watch Apprentice. Yeah. He's going to fire people left and right. And then he started talking about politics, and everybody realized, 
wow, we got some fool's gold here. The good thing is we realized it was fool's gold early. Yeah. So if we put them in the office, then we just put in fool's gold. And that then at that point in time, that is our fault. So as far as all the other, I'm with Marcus. I'm not with the negativity. I mean, no, no joke. I ain't never picked cotton a day in my life. I don't plan on starting on the ninth. Um, unless for some reason I'm broken, I got to. But, you know, you, your future is what you, you make of it, not exactly. someone else. Yeah. So anybody who wants those kind of negative terms, then their situation is something they have to deal with. I'm just saying, like, people really live for negativity. Even after the FBI came out and said that they weren't going to charge her, you still got people at his rallies today saying, lock her up, lock her up. You know, so again, the negativity, a lot of people can be brainwashed. A lot of people can be persuaded. And that's actually what's going on. You know, now, again, I don't know if these people are going to the Trump rallies for entertainment and then are going to vote totally different when they get in the booth tomorrow or for what they've already voted for. And again, this is just entertainment for them to see the apprentice guy or the man who owns the Trump Towers. Um, but again, yeah, I, I really think everybody has to go out and vote. That's just the key thing. Just go out and vote. Whether you feel like it's going to do anything or not, go out and get some fresh air early in the morning or tomorrow evening. Just go vote. Just just go yeah. vote, man. And you know, has to have one Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. <laughs> Our sister Green Diamond is checking us out. Hey, Green Diamond. Green Diamond is checking us hey, out, Green and Diamond. she says vote for Hillary. And oh, so fuck. she says, she says, she says vote for Hillary. Too, uh, let's man. see, anything else out here? Yeah, I got another comment here from uh, our sister Melanie. Is still checking in, and it's, it's long, so bear with me. But uh, she says she knows plenty of people voting. Uh, she knows plenty about the voting process, rather. So for anyone to say that they don't ask questions, et cetera, is is absolutely incorrect. There are smart people who don't vote and exactly, understand exactly what's going on. Look at your neighborhood and you're still the poorest on earth. Most black folks don't even own anything because he or she is too scared to actually put their money together and actually yeah. do instead exactly. of all the talking. Yes. Just yes. for the record, your babies are going to war and not that I'm happy about it. I can't wait to see how you feel when the draft opens. Uh, yeah. What you're going to do when these white militias come for you? They yeah. are just waiting uh, for yeah. the white right time to strike, for the right time to strike. Oh yeah, and you do know that the U.S. is entangled with countries, uh, other countries <coughs> regarding this election. I, I, yeah. I have nothing wrong with that. With yeah. that comment. Right, and yeah. let me and, and let that me was say this. I, I see nothing wrong with that comment. Right, and let me just say this too, Melanie. Like seriously, because that's what I was saying. Like my cousin, she is very educated and very on top of her game, and she is one of the ones who said that she's just not going to vote. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I feel like that a lot more who have said that are just not educated enough on the process to be right. able to really say why they're not going to vote. So like you and like my cousin and the other educated ones who say that they're not going to vote because they really know why a lot of the people in our hoods don't know why they're really not going right. to vote that's just the whole thing i was saying and that was going to be like a, a next question like whoever becomes president how is they going to impact the rest of the world well you know I, what i'm saying i, I think this it, it depends on obviously Obviously, it depends on which one of the two of them gets in there, yeah. you know. And I took some heat because I suggested in social media that, you know, the fact that Hillary Clinton is a woman, you know, you're going to have certain countries that may end up trying us because of that. Exactly. And, you know, obviously, there have been women leaders around the world before, you know, and even women leaders of major powers like yeah. Margaret Thatcher yeah. uh, in England in our childhood. I believe she was in the 80, late 80s or the 90s, whenever it yeah. was she was. But by all accounts, she was a dope chick who didn't take nobody's shit. Right. And so, you know, Hillary Clinton, you can argue back and forth how you feel about her, but she ain't nobody that she 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 ain't taking nobody's crap yeah. either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas somebody like Donald Trump, I can see him saying, "Yeah, we're not gonna pay that debt. Deal with it." And then people come for us because yeah. of their money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And he'll pick fights with. And people. he'll pick fights with yeah. people. So. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I just honestly think that we're going to be in some sort of war entanglement. And then we have to be mindful of our relationship with 
our, 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 our what they call frenemy, yeah. hmm. you know, which is Russia. Yeah. Russia is a frenemy, yeah. you know, because sometimes we rock with them and sometimes we don't. I remember being a kid, and this is some real stuff. I remember being a child in 1987, 88. Cold. I was at four, uh, age, uh, 41, PS41 in Jersey City, New Jersey, and I remember we had a bomb scare. We had a bomb scare at the school. I remember being outside the school for 15, 20 minutes, however long it was. And the reason why the kids thought that we were outside, obviously this wasn't the truth. But we as kids thought that we was outside because Gorbachev came for us. Mm -hmm. And they brought, he brought a bomb to our school. Right. That's what we thought as yeah. kids. Because that was in the middle of the Cold War, right? We were just before we came out. It was, mm-hmm. you know, it was right around the Mr. Gorbachev. Yeah. yeah. Tear down <laughs> that. Well, it's right around that time. <laughs> Big Rube, yeah. you get the last word on this subject before yeah. you take us into the, f- the next segment of the show. Positivity. That's, I mean, don't, don't vote because you choose. If you're going to vote, then don't complain. If you're not going to vote then just shut up for four years and, and keep it moving. But You don't because, think there's going to be a reason to complain if we vote? Just I mean, I'm so sorry, but, I'm so sorry. but by voting, you get that right to complain okay. because right. you can I, do I, that. I, 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 I but if that. you don't vote, right. then suck it up and take it right. because you chose not to speak on, on your opinion and your opinion doesn't matter after tomorrow because if mm-hmm. you don't use your opinion the way it needs to be used, then you have no right to even complain about the outcome. I can dig it. Ain't no how to step with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy and the radio. Gonna take a break. And when we come back, Big Rube is taking us around the round table. Uh, it'll be our final segment before we get into our rants and our closings. Big Rube tease us. What are we talking about? There are other things on the ballot tomorrow in Virginia other than voting for a president. And we're gonna talk right. about that. And we also gonna talk about uh, and he he I didn't I'm gonna throw this in there, but we have five states that have something very, very interesting on their ballot as well. We're going to talk about that on the other side. Marcus J., Big Rube, Jody Smith, Mr. 3375, and the First Lady of Legacy and their radio comedian, that's Lisa P. Ow, ow. And me. Roof, roof. Be back in a few, y'all. Stay with us. <laughs> I wanted to join.